Sometimes people ask me why am I so productive? How is it that I can write four books a year, give a hundred talks, run free businesses, and do so much stuff, volunteer, nature, travel all over the world? Well, the answer is my organization system. And it's interesting, they interviewed 50 presidents of fast-growing companies in Inkor magazine, and they asked them, what time management system do you use? You know, 49 out of the 50 used a yellow pad, where they write down everything before they start. They said, what about a Blackberry? What about a time management system? No, they just take a sheet of paper, and they write down everything they have to do the night before, and they work from their list all day long. And you know, that's what I've been doing all my life. It's the most powerful time management tool of all. It's clear, it's visible, it's right there. You add new things onto it, you tick them off as you accomplish them, you roll forward the things you didn't complete to the next day. Most amazing time management system of all is a pad of paper, a pen, and you, every single day. Another two major sources of value in the world of work today. The first is time, and the second is knowledge. Today, time is the currency of modern business. The most important measure of time is duration or speed. The most important quality that you can develop with regard to time is a sense of urgency. A sense of urgency is the habit of moving fast when an opportunity presents itself to you. Develop a bias for action. Fast tempo is essential to success. All successful people not only work hard, 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 but they work fast, fast, fast. Now, everyone must stay focused on reducing the amount of time that it takes to get the same results. Customers will pay dearly for anyone who can reduce the time needed to get them the products and services that they want. People will pay more for someone who can satisfy their needs faster than someone else. And especially when it comes to managing your time, when it comes to looking at what you should do on a day-to-day -day basis, focus on results, not activities. You will always have too much to do in too little time. They say the average person has about 300 hours of projects to take care of right now. Books to read, magazines, newspapers, projects at home, work, and everything else. The fact is, you will never get caught up. So what they have found, and this is one of the great secrets of time management, is that you only get your life under control to the degree to which you stop doing things. Let me repeat that. You stop doing things. Now what are the things that you stop doing? Well, the easiest way to set priorities and to determine this is to use the 80-20 rule. That is, if you make a list of 10 things that you have to do each day, two of those items will be worth more than all the other eight put together. The top 20% of activities account for 80% of your results. So you have to say to yourself, what are the one or two things on this list that are more important than anything else? And of all these things, if I could only do one thing before I was called out of town for a month, which one thing would I be sure to get done today? And that becomes your number one priority. Now, over the years, the ability to set priorities, and I have written books on time management. I've trained hundreds of thousands of people in time management. My audio and video programs on time management are in multiple languages worldwide. And everything comes down to one thing. Selecting your most important task right now and starting on it right now. And then disciplining yourself to stay on it until it's done. If you make the mistake of trying to clear up small things first, you'll find out the small things multiply. And pretty soon, you've spent your whole day doing little things. Sometimes people ask me, why am I so productive? How is it that I can write four books a year, give a hundred talks, run free businesses, and do so much stuff, volunteer, nature, travel all over the world? Well, the answer is my organization system. I began to study time management, and I've studied time management now for 15 years. I spent thousands and thousands of dollars on the subject. I've got libraries of books. I've been to countless courses. I've listened to all the audio cassettes. I've bought and used every time planner that's ever been made with regard to time management. And I found that there is a core element in time management, and it's the element of priorities. I think that the ability to focus and concentration are the two keys to success in life. The ability to focus clearly and know exactly what it is you want to accomplish, and the ability to concentrate single-mindedly on accomplishing that one thing without diversion or distraction, are the keys to success. It's the number one key to effectiveness. To be able to sit down and look at your work and use the 80-20 rule, to say to yourself, which is the 20% of the number of things that I have to do that account for 80% of the value of my work? And always work on the top 20. You see, in life, there's never enough time to do everything. 
But there's always enough time to do the important things. Instead of doing what is fun and easy, which is what most people do, nor do they make a list of everything they have to do, and then start at the bottom of the list and work on the irrelevant things, at the end of the day, they haven't got anything done. Successful people, peak performers, concentrate on the top items. And remember, anything other than working on the top items on your list is a waste of your time. Time management is not just time management. Time management is life management. You can do anything you want with your life if you manage your time properly. We all have the same 24 hours a day. And the ability to concentrate, 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 to discipline yourself to use willpower and perseverance to concentrate on one thing at a time, is a quality of all success. Nothing great has ever been accomplished without the ability to concentrate single-mindedly on one thing at a time. Always concentrate on the best use of your time. There's probably no skill that's more closely correlated with success and achievement in every part of your life than the ability to manage your time well. It'll bring you to the attention of your superiors faster. It'll help you get more done in a shorter period of time. It'll make you feel better about yourself. It'll lead to faster promotions, higher status, greater pay, and everything. Time management is essential to your health as well, not just your productivity, but you only feel good about yourself to the degree to which you feel you're in control of your time and your life. In fact, the major reason for stress in America is a feeling of being out of control, a feeling of having too much to do and too little time to do it in. Here's my favorite time management question, which I give to you for free. Before you start anything, ask yourself, what is the most valuable use of my time right now? Make a list and say, what is the most valuable use of my time right now? When you get into your car, say, what is the most valuable use of my time right now? When you leave the house or leave the office, say, what is the most valuable use of my time right now? Ask yourself that question over and over and over again. Repeat it until it's driven into the subconscious mind as a command. And whenever you have a temptation to do something that is small and irrelevant, that command will go bam. What is the most valuable use of your time right now? And it'll push you into doing what is the most valuable use of your time. And whenever you're working on the most valuable use of your time, you feel great. Concentrated effort is a source of energy and enthusiasm. It makes you feel wonderful when you're working on something important, and it makes you feel nothing when you're working on something irrelevant. Now procrastination is not only the thief of time, it is also the thief of life. To outperform your competition, both inside and outside your organization, you must develop a time management habit of moving quickly when something needs to be done. You must develop a reputation for speed and dependability. The wonderful advantage of developing a sense of urgency and the habit of moving fast is that the faster you move, the better you get. This is because the faster you move, the more experience you get. The faster you move, the more you learn and the more competence you become. The faster you move, the more energy and enthusiasm you have. People who move fast as a way of life soon develop a totally different temperament and personality than people who move slowly or who take a casual attitude toward their work. My friend Jim Rohn used to say, casualness brings casualties. In its simplest terms, successful people are more productive than unsuccessful people. Successful people have better habits. They dream bigger dreams. They work from written goals. They stay focused on what they need to get done. They do what they love to do and they concentrate on getting better and better at it. They use their natural abilities to the fullest. They're continually generating ideas to solve problems and to achieve company goals. They focus on using every minute of their time to get maximum results. Develop a sense of urgency. A sense of urgency is a quality that is possessed by only 2% of the population. 2% of the population do things fast. 2% of the population have a bias for action. In Tom Peters' wonderful book, In Search of Excellence, he says all the excellent companies have a bias for action. And all of the companies that do not classify or do not commit to the excellence category do things when they get around to it. You call them up, and you have a problem or a complaint, you hear from them three or four weeks later. But the excellent companies, you call up with a problem or complaint, bang, there's somebody back to you in two minutes. If you ever want an experience, call IBM, call Hewlett Packard, and say, I'm having a problem getting some information. I'm having a problem with my PC. They won't let you off the phone until they've taken care of you. You call the other companies, they'll say, it's not my job. They'll say, the guy who takes care of that isn't here. When will you be back? I don't know. 
and you take a message, I don't have a pencil. You know, you've spoken to those people, and then they can't understand why they're struggling. You know, that 80-20 of the companies make 80% of the profits in every industry, interestingly enough. So develop a sense of urgency. Get the reputation as the person who does things fast. Develop a reputation for speed and dependability, and your future will just open up in front of you. Imagine if you owned a company, and you had two people in the company, and both of them were reasonably well talented, both of them were doing reasonably well, except one person had a sense of urgency and did things fast. And every time you gave them something to do, they took it and they ran with it like a ball player catching a fumble and running for the goal line. The other person got to it after lunch, or maybe next Monday, or no rush, weeks almost over, Thursday afternoon, and so on. Which one would you give additional responsibility to? Which one would you promote? Which one would you spend money training? Which one would you send to places where you needed help? It's always the person with a sense of urgency. I can tell you this. That the sense of urgency, for me, has been worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. As a consultant, I have been able to save my clients sometimes millions of dollars by acting fast when they've given me a project to take care of. Whereas if I had acted even a day later, it could have cost a fortune. And if you'll develop that habit of working fast, that sense of urgency, act now, do it now, do it now, do it now. In selling especially, somebody calls you up and has a question, get back to them now. Somebody has a problem, get back to them now. Somebody needs something, move on it quickly. If you have to forego coffee breaks or lunch or something else, move fast. If you develop that reputation for speed, it would be worth a fortune to you. It takes a little while, but it's a habit most people just sort of shuffle through life, you know, they get to it when they feel like it. But all the excellent people, all the high performers, have a sense of urgency. I want to give you four time management tips for work-life balance. Now time management behaviors are very much a matter of choice. You choose to be efficient, or you choose to be disorganized. You choose to focus and concentrate on your highest value tasks, or you choose to spend your time on activities that contribute very little to your life. You choose to be positive, or you choose to be negative, and you're always free to choose. Now the starting point of overcoming your previous programming and eliminating the mental blocks to time management is for you to make a clear, unequivocal decision to become excellent at the way you use your time. You must decide, right here and now, that you are going to become an expert in time management to improve the quality of your life. Your aim should be to manage your time so well that people look up to you and use you as a role model for their own work habits. There are four time management methods that you can use to program yourself for peak performance and to improve your work-life balance. Here they are. The first of these methods for programming your subconscious mind is positive self-talk, or the use of positive affirmations. These are commands that you pass from your conscious mind to your subconscious mind. Positive affirmations are statements that you say either out loud or you say to yourself but with the same emotion and enthusiasm that drives the words into your subconscious mind as new operating instructions. So, to improve your time management, you can continually repeat positive affirmations such as, I have beautiful work-life balance, or, I concentrate easily on my highest payoff tasks. My favorite time management affirmation is, I use my time well. And I repeat this to myself over and over again. When you repeat positive affirmations over and over, they're eventually accepted by your subconscious mind as part of your new programming. You will then find that your external behaviors will start to reflect your internal programming to improve your work-life balance and quality of life. Now, the second technique that you can use to program your subconscious mind is through visualization, mental pictures that immediately influence your subconscious mind. In self-image psychology, the person you see is the person you will be. Through positive affirmations and clear mental pictures, begin to see yourself as well-organized, efficient, and effective in time management. Recall and recreate memories and pictures of yourself when you are performing at your best, when you felt very efficient, effective, and in control. Think of a time when you were working efficiently and effectively, and getting through an enormous amount of work. Play this picture over and over of yourself and screen of your subconscious mind until your subconscious mind accepts this as your reality. Now the third time management technique is simple. Sit or lie in a quiet place where you can be completely alone in silence. Through positive affirmations, imagine yourself going through an important upcoming experience, 
such as a meeting, presentation, negotiation, or even a date, that would improve the quality of your life. As you sit or lie completely relaxed, create a picture of the coming event and see it unfolding perfectly in every respect, like a movie in your mind. See yourself as calm, positive, and in complete control. See the other people doing and saying exactly what you would want them to do if the situation was perfect. The fourth mental technique will change the quality of your life through the experience of time management. Imagine that you have been selected for a role in a movie or stage play. In this role, you are to act the part of a person who is extremely well organized in every respect. As you go through your daily life, imagine you are an actor who is playing this part, who is already very good at time management. Act as if you are already using your time efficiently and well. Pretend that you are an expert in personal efficiency and time management. Fake it until you make it. When you pretend that you are excellent in time management, eventually the action, which is under your direct control, will develop a mindset or the belief in your subconscious mind. In other words, you can act yourself into feeling and believing yourself to be excellent in time management. The Greeks said that moderation in all things is the key to a happy life. Moderation. Sometimes people say, well, I don't have time for my family, I don't have time to exercise, I don't have time for this and time for that. Whenever you find yourself getting out of sync with regard to balance, and especially when you feel that you don't have the time, is when you most need to stop and think. So here's the question to ask. What would I do if I only had six months to live? If you find yourself working too hard, or not spending time in your relationship, not spending time with the people you care about and who care about you, then ask yourself, what would I do if I only had six months to live? And if what you would do is you'd spend more time with the important people in your life, then the time to start spending that time is now. So what would you do if you had six months to live? It's an old joke that doctors say, that they never met a businessman on his deathbed who said, boy, I wish I'd spent more time at the office. The fact of the matter is that balance and moderation in all things increase your productivity and efficiency. Remember, the only reason you're working is so that you can enjoy the great things of life, which are your people, your relationships, the things that make you happy, and so on. Imagine that you are financially independent, that you have 20 million pounds in the bank, and simultaneously, you only have 10 years to live. You're going to enjoy superb health, but you have all the money that you need and you have to work at something. You cannot be a layabout. Therefore, if you could work at anything, and you had all the money you needed, and you didn't want to waste any time, what career would you choose? If you could wave a magic wand, and have all the talent and skill that you need to be successful in any field, what field would you choose for yourself? And then what you do is you just start to do some research on that field, working it part-time, working it for free, reading books and courses, talking to people who are in it, I have spoken to literally thousands of people over the years who did that, and eventually changed out of their current job, sometimes within their same company, changed out of their current job where they weren't very satisfied into a new job that they loved, and they became a star at that new job, and virtually everybody can do this. I'm going to give you a law that is my favorite law of time management, and it's called the Law of Three. This law alone will enable you to be one of the most productive and successful people in your world. The law of three is based on my 30 years of study into time management, and what it basically says is that if you make a list of everything that you have to do in a week or a month, you'll come up with 20 or 30, some people write down 40 or 50 tasks or activities. But if you look at this list, you'll find there's only three activities that you engage in in your life that account for 90% of the value that you contribute in your life. Wherever you are in life, there's only not three things that account for 90% of your happiness, only three things. This law of three works everywhere, and it works for everyone. It works if you're a doctor or an investment banker or a salesperson or a business owner or a student, whatever. There's always three. And so what you do is you make a list of everything you do, and then you ask three questions. Question number one is, if I could only do one thing on this list all day long, which one activity would have the greatest positive impact on my life? Or you could say, if I could only do one activity all day long, which one activity would help me to double my income faster than anything else? And that answer is usually pretty obvious. So you put a circle on that, and then you ask it again. If I could only do two things all day long, what would be the second most valuable thing that I could do? You go through your list, and you'll come up with number two. And then you ask the question the third time. If I could only do three things all day long, what would be number three? 
and you circle it. Now I put every one of my students through this exercise, and they're all astonished because in a few minutes, they see clearly that these are the three most important things that they do in achieving their goals of health, wealth, and happiness. And so, the rule is this. Do fewer things in your daily life, but do more important things, and do them more of the time, and then get better. Improve in each one of those areas. So, in your life, there's three things that you do that are more important than everything else, and these will change over time. But you must be clear about those three things, and if you start working on only those three things, you will double your productivity, performance, and output very quickly if you can concentrate on the three most important things you do. Well, there's four requirements for you to make these techniques work for you. We call these the four Ds. The first D is desire, it's want. You must have a burning desire to be effective at time management. The second D is decision. You must make a decision that you are going to become an expert in this subject. You are going to take this course. You're going to use these materials. You're going to practice them over and over again. Because what we have found is, in the absence of a decision, nothing ever happens. You need a clear, unequivocal, do or die, burn the bridges decision that this is a subject that you are going to master. The third D is discipline. You must discipline yourself to practice and repeat over and over again good time management techniques. In fact, we say that time management is self-discipline in action. And the ability to discipline yourself more than anything else is going to determine your success in life. And the fourth D to become excellent in time management is determination. You must have the ability to persist. You must have the determination to keep on keeping at it long enough until you become very, very good in this field. But I promise you this. The payoff is tremendous. Because you see, time management is really life management. Everything that you do to improve the quality of your time management will improve and enhance every part of your life. You can even say it this way. The quality of your life is determined by the quality of your time management. The quality of your life will be determined by the way you use your time, minute to minute, hour to hour, day to day, because your time is your life. We find that intense result orientation goes hand in hand with big payoffs in life. You see, it's not about how much time you put in or the activities you engage in, nor is it about how sincere, intelligent, competent, or capable you are. It's only about what you produce, the results that you get from the time you put in, that counts in determining your rewards. And I'm not just talking about psychic rewards, like feeling good about yourself, but also your financial rewards. You're always paid in direct proportion to the quality and quantity of the results that you produce. Point number one is that your rewards in life will always equal your results. We call this the law of sowing and reaping, the law of cause and effect. The cause of everything that happens to you is your ability to get results, and these are your rewards. If you want to increase the quality and quantity of your rewards, you have to think all the time about increasing the quality and quantity of your results. The second point is that most people are very unproductive. Most people could not do a full day's work if their life depended on it. In fact, every study I've ever seen suggests that the average person works at only 50% of capacity. In most work environments, about 30% of all work time is spent socializing, gossiping, wasting time, chit-chatting, hanging around the water fountain, reading the newspaper, drinking coffee, and so on. What does this mean for you? It means that the average person is working at 50% or less of capacity. There are tremendous opportunities for you if you do some of the things that we talk about to rapidly move ahead of other people. The starting point of getting things done is the quality of neatness. Neatness means that you start with a clean desk and you end with a clean desk. You take the time to make sure that your entire working environment looks neat, professional, productive, and effective. Remember, it's not just what you do, but it's the perception of other people of what you do that counts. I read a story by a self-made millionaire who said that he built five successful companies, and one of their critical rules was that every single person kept going there. Now the fourth key in getting things done is the importance of focus. Focus leads to clarity, and we talk about this over and over again. Focus means that you're absolutely clear about what you're trying to accomplish. Focus means that you're absolutely clear about your key result areas and why you're on the payroll. We say that fuzzy focus leads to fuzzy results, while clear focus leads to clear results. This means that you take the time to think through why you're on the payroll, what you've been hired to accomplish, what are your key result areas, what are your core functions, what are the 20% of the things that you do, that account for 80% of your results, and so on. 
So the starting point in getting things done is focus and clarity. I call this adjusting the camera all the time so you keep your focus very, very clear. The next key principle is concentration. Concentration is what you do once you've decided on the most important idea to achieve your most important goal. Then you have to concentrate single-mindedly on that one thing until it's complete. Bill Gates and Warren Buffett, the richest men in the world, were at a dinner party at Bill Gates' home last year. And there were about a hundred guests standing around at the reception drinking wine and so on. One of the other guests came up and said, Excuse me, gentlemen, you are three of the most important people in the world. What would you say is the most important key to success today? And they stopped talking and they all turned and said, Focus. Focus is the most important quality for success today. We're so surrounded by distractions of so many kinds that the ability to focus is more important for success than any other quality. Now, I developed a philosophy when I was young and broke, and the philosophy was that if rich, successful people tell you to do something, you should do it. If they tell you that this is a key to their success, then you should at least practice it for a while to see if it applies to you. What I have learned, and what I've learned coaching my clients, my business owners, is I taught them how to focus. I taught them how to select specific goals and activities in each area of their life, and how to focus like a laser beam on one goal at a time. If you can do that, you can conquer the world. Now concentration is, in reality, where all the work and time management leads us. It is the ability to concentrate 100% on one thing, setting priorities, the most important thing, and to stay with that single task until it's finished. Concentration means moving forward in a straight line toward the goals and objectives that you've clearly identified. It means concentrating without diversion or distraction. Focus and concentration, I believe, in 25 years of research, are the reasons for success and happiness in life. The reasons for a lack of success and unhappiness are lack of focus, lack of concentration. I have found the most important time management or personal productivity principle of all, and it is this. Make a list of everything you do in the morning before you start work, and then select the one item on that list that's more important than any others in terms of potential consequences, and then start on that one task and work on it 100% of the time until it's complete. If you can do that, you can double and triple your productivity, become one of the highest paid and most respected people in your world. Select your most important task, start on it immediately, work on it 100% of the time until it's complete. Because here's what I discovered in 30 years of studying and writing books on time management. Task completion is the key to success. It's not tasks that you work on, but it's only the tasks that you complete. If you're a student, it's completing your assignments and your reports. If you're a salesperson, it's completing the sales. If you're a business person, it's completing different transactions. Everything in life is completing tasks. Here's a wonderful payoff. When you complete an important task, it gives you an increased sense of self-esteem and personal power. Your self-confidence goes up, you get more energy and more ideas, you feel happy about yourself. Whenever you complete a task, your brain gives you a rush of endorphins. Endorphins make you happy, more alert, more creative. They strengthen your immune system so that you're never sick. So you'll find that what successful people do is they're always starting and completing tasks. And especially they start and complete them on time. What does this require? It requires our old friend and enemy, self-discipline. Task completion is the key to the future. Not only is it the key to getting more and greater opportunities, but important task completion, doing something that's important to you and carrying it through and finishing it 100% at the end, is a source of energy, enthusiasm, and high self-esteem. Men and women who are working consistently on getting important things done and staying with them to completion are more positive, more optimistic, more self-confident, and they have more belief and self-assurance in themselves, and they get more opportunities to complete more tasks. Completing low-priority tasks, on the other hand, leads to stress. If you work and get a lot of little things done but they're not moving you toward the accomplishment of things that are really important to you, what happens is you just feel crummy as a result. We find that the average Brit, average German, average French person, works about 1,600 hours a year. The average executive or business owner works about 2,000 hours a year. So what you do is you take your annual income and you divide it by 2,000. Let's say you're earning $100,000 a year. Divided by 2,000, that means you're earning $50 an hour. This is your hourly rate. Ricardo's Law, David Ricardo, 
the British economist, is you don't do anything that pays less than $50 an hour. You only do things that pay you $50 an hour or more, or that people would pay you $50 an hour or more to do. Everything else you delegate. If there's something that someone else can do for $10 an hour, you hire somebody to do that. $20 an hour, $30 an hour, you keep hiring people who can do things at a lower hourly rate than yourself. Here's the great discovery, and this can be life-changing. I call it the law of three. The law of three says that no matter how many things you do, how many tasks you do in a week or a month, and it's usually 20 or 30, three of those tasks account for 90% of your value. Only three. And you make a list of all your tasks, and I do this with my business owners, and they're astonished, and they double their income within 30 days, because I ask them the three magic questions. Magic question number one. If you could only do one thing on this list, one task on this list all day long, which one task would have the greatest positive impact on your career? Which one task? Well, it'll usually... Then you say, if you could only do two things all day long, which would be number two? And you put a circle around that. If you could only do three things all day long, which would be number three? Put a circle around that. And suddenly it's almost like all these other tasks fade again, like in a camera shoot in a movie, a fade, and those three tasks are sitting there like those three magic tabs. And you realize, oh my god, those are my big three. Everything else is secondary. Everything else can be done by someone else or done later or not done at all. And then you focus on the three. So here's the rule for doubling your income and doubling it again and again. Do fewer things but do more important things, and do them more often, and get better at them. Repeat. Do fewer things, the big three. Do more important things. Do more of them. Spend more of your day working on those three tasks, and then get better at those tasks, so you can get more done faster at a higher level of quality. If you practice the law of three, you'll transform your life. If you combine that with eating the frog and working on your most important task, the one that can contribute the most value, and you can do that until it becomes a habit, just automatically get up in the morning and start work on your most important task, you'll conquer the world. To all of us, over the course of our lives, we want to develop character. And character has been defined several ways. One definition I like is that character is the ability to follow through on a resolution after the enthusiasm with which the resolution was made has passed. So taking this course, by the way, you'll make a lot of decisions and commitments and resolutions. The true measure of character is whether or not you have the capacity to follow through. Character, in effect, is self-discipline in action. Character is self-discipline in action. You can tell how much character you have by how willing you are to discipline yourself to make the sacrifices that are necessary in the short term to have a great life in the long term. Many years ago I began to study the subject of time management because I thought it was a very helpful subject. And I was amazed at how much there was in time management. I then produced programs and books. And books on time management are now the best selling in the world in 40 languages. But what I learned was a concept. And the concept was called consequences. Consequences, I found, is one of the most important words in our world. And the reason is that in time management, something is important to the degree to which it has big potential consequences, and something is unimportant to the degree to which it has low or no consequences. Thinking has the greatest consequences of all. In fact, if you look at people who are successful, and people who are unsuccessful, successful people do things that have greater long-term consequences, and unsuccessful people do things that have low or no consequences. And though especially the way you think about your time and your life. If you think more effectively, if you think more positively, if you think more constructively about yourself, your time, your life, your activities, your relationships, your work, and so on, you actually improve them all. The first thing I want to talk about is what is called the development of a personal philosophy of time. A personal philosophy of time also means a personal philosophy of life. What is life? What does it mean? What does it stand for? And in life there are two basic worldviews, and basically they're at opposite ends of the pole. Sometimes we fall in the middle. The first worldview is a benevolent worldview. People with a benevolent worldview are those who have a positive mental attitude, generally speaking, toward themselves and their life. They believe in their own potential. They believe in love and life and beauty. They believe in growing to the realization of their full capabilities. They believe that life is pretty good and that they can have a major impact. They can make a contribution, 
and do something substantial with their lives. People with a benevolent worldview are the movers and shakers and the builders of all time. The other type of people are those who have a malevolent worldview. These are people who have a negative mental attitude if you like, and they have, first of all, a negative mental attitude toward themselves. They have a negative mental attitude toward other people, toward the world. They see injustice and oppression. They see unhappiness and misery. They see unfairness and people having a hard life. They have a tendency to be angry and to have low self-esteem. But always, the malevolent worldview requires someone or something else to blame. Someone or something to criticize, something to be down on. That's why you find that people with a malevolent worldview are always in contra, opposition, or if you like, in conflict with people with a benevolent worldview. In order for you to achieve your potential, remember, the most important people, the most productive people, the most creative people, are always those who have a benevolent, positive, constructive worldview. And that's your goal. The number one reason why some people get more work done faster is because they are absolutely clear about their goals and objectives and they don't deviate from them. The more clear you are about what it is you want and what you have to do to achieve it, the easier it is for you to overcome procrastination, eat your frog, and get on with the completion of the task. A major reason for procrastination and lack of motivation is vagueness, confusion, and fuzzy-mindedness about what you are supposed to do, and in what order, and for what reason. You must avoid this common condition with all your strength by striving for ever greater clarity in everything you do. You need to persevere and persist single-mindedly toward the completion of your important task, because we say that the ability to concentrate is a discipline, and perseverance or persistence is self-discipline in action. You see, anybody can start off to do a job, but your ability to keep in there and keep slogging and stay with it and refuse to budge and keep moving is the critical factor of high performance. Remember that the average person, especially executives, pick up an important piece of paper or task as many as five times before they actually complete work on the task. What does this mean? It means that if you pick up the task and you focus single-mindedly on that, and it's your most important, and you concentrate on it till it's complete, you can give yourself a 500% savings in time or increase in productivity. This has been proven in study after study after study that the fastest way to increase your output is to pick up a task and to stay with that task instead of picking it up and coming back and picking it up and coming back and so on. The 80-20 rule is one of the most helpful of all concepts of time and life management. It's also called the Pareto Principle after its founder, the Italian economist Wilfredo Pareto, who first wrote about it in 1895. Pareto noticed that people in his society seemed to divide naturally into what he called the vital few, the top 20% in terms of money and influence, and the trivial many, the bottom 80%. He later discovered that virtually all economic activity was subject to this Pareto principle as well. For example, this rule says that 20% of your activities will account for 80% of your results. 20% of your customers will account for 80% of your sales. 20% of your products or services will account for 80% of your profits. 20% of your tasks will account for 80% of the value of what you do, and so on. This means that if you have a list of 10 items to do today, two of those items will turn out to be worth as much or more than all the other eight items put together. A lot of comparative advantages in economic law say that you should always hire or pay someone else to do something that can be done if they can be paid a lower hourly rate than the rate that you desire. For instance, if your goal is to earn $25 an hour and it costs $6 an hour to mow your lawn or wash your car, you should always hire someone to do that. You should always pay someone else at a lower hourly rate so that you can free up your time to perform higher value activities. All companies and organizations are designed around the individual. The individual starts off doing everything. And then as a company becomes busier and more successful, what the individual does is they hire people to do lower value activities so you can spend more time doing higher value activities. Don't ever do $5 an hour work if you want to earn $25 an hour. Don't ever work on low value activities if you want to earn the results that come from completing high-value activities. Remember, time is the one irreplaceable, indispensable resource of accomplishment. All accomplishment, all achievement, requires time, and if you use it on something of low value, it's gone forever. It's perishable, and you don't have it to work on things that are really important to you. Here's an interesting discovery. Each of these tasks may take the same amount of time to accomplish, 
but one or two of these tasks will contribute five or ten times the value of any of the others. Often, one item on a list of ten tasks that you have to do can be worth more than all the other nine items put together. This task is invariably the fraud that you should eat first. Can you guess on which items the average person is most likely to procrastinate? You're right. The sad fact is that most people procrastinate on the top 10 or 20% of items that are the most valuable and important, the vital few. They busy themselves instead with the least important 80%, the trivial many, that contribute very little to results. You often see people who appear to be busy all day long but seem to accomplish very little. This is almost always because they are working on tasks that are of low value, while they procrastinate on the one or two activities that could make a real difference to their companies and to their careers. The most valuable tasks you can do each day are often the hardest and most complex. But the payoff and rewards for completing these tasks efficiently can be tremendous. For this reason, you must adamantly refuse to work on tasks in the bottom 80% while you still have tasks in the top 20% left to be done. Before you begin work, always ask yourself, is this task in the top 20% of my activities or in the bottom 80%? And here's a rule for success. Resist the temptation to clear up small things first. Remember, whatever you choose to do over and over again eventually becomes a habit that's hard to break. If you choose to start your day on low-value tasks, you will soon develop the habit of always starting and working on low-value tasks. This is not the kind of habit you want to develop or keep. You need to look at everything that you're expected to do based on your hourly rate. If your desired hourly rate is $10 or $20 or $30 or $40 or $50 an hour, then you ask yourself, is what I am doing now paying my hourly rate? Because what I'm doing now worth my hourly rate? Or ask yourself this way, if you're leafing through the newspaper or watching television or sitting around socializing, would you pay another person your hourly rate to engage in this activity? How much would you pay per hour to have a person watch television for you? When you're watching television, you should ask yourself, how much would I pay per hour to watch this television show? The average person doesn't realize that the amount of time that they spend watching television is, in itself, if it were used to upgrade your skills and ability, enough to make you rich over the course of your working lifetime. A television can cost you thousands of dollars, even tens of thousands of dollars a year. If you don't think about the fact that when you're watching television, you're not doing something that is increasing your productivity. Thank you. The hardest part of any important task is getting started on it in the first place. Once you actually begin work on a valuable task, you seem to be naturally motivated to continue. A part of your mind loves to be busy working on significant tasks that can really make a difference. Your job is to feed this part of your mind continually. Just thinking about starting and finishing an important task motivates you and helps you to overcome procrastination. The fact is that the amount of time required to complete an important job is often the same as the time required to do an unimportant job. The difference is that you get a tremendous feeling of pride and satisfaction from the completion of something valuable and significant. However, when you complete a low-value task using the same amount of time and energy, you get little or no satisfaction at all. Time management is really life management, personal management. It's really taking control of the sequence of events. Time management is control over what you do next, and you're always free to choose the task that you will do next. Your ability to choose between the important and the unimportant is the key determinant of your success in life and work. Effective, productive people discipline themselves to start on the most important task that is before them. They force themselves to eat that frog, whatever it is. They accomplish vastly more than the average person and are much happier as a result. This should be your way of working as well. Time management is a lifelong skill. It's a lifelong commitment. It's not something that you learn and then put aside. Time management is a discipline, but it's like physical exercise, it's like eating, it's like sleeping, it's like hygiene, brushing your teeth. You have to work on it continuously, every single day. You have to get up, and you have to think consciously about how you're going to manage your time, how you're going to use it today. Remember, time is life, but you have to think continually about how you're going to use your life more effectively. A key part of time management is to take the short view, which means to measure out your time in minutes. We find the most productive people in our society, the most important, the most prominent, are those who are the most fastidious about their time management. They measure up their time in 10-minute chunks like accountants and lawyers and doctors, whereas unsuccessful people measure other times in half days and full days and weeks. So take the short view, 
be fastidious about your time. Following that is, know where your time goes. Know where your time goes. Take the time to think. Know where your time goes so that you can ask yourself if this is how you want to spend your time. Analyze it. Keep a list of how you spend your time. Look and ask yourself all the time. Is this consistent with what I want to do and what I want to accomplish? Just say no if a particular activity does not contribute to the highest value use of your time. Just say no if something is not helping you. Use the techniques of delay in order to gain time to think about whether or not you want to do something. One of the best techniques I've ever used and discovered is what is called the 24-hour technique. No matter what anybody wants you to do, ask for 24 hours to think about it. Think about it overnight. Think about it over the weekend. Think about how you're going to say no. And just say no to anything that does not contribute to accomplishing things that are important to you. Dr. Edward Banfield of Harvard University studied success for years and years. In this context, he said, what are the characteristics of people that cause them to move up socioeconomically in the course of their lifetime? What are the predictors of upward social evolution? And what he found out was that long-time perspective was the critical factor, that this is an attitude, and people with long-time perspective, as we mentioned briefly before, are those who take a look at where they are now and where they want to be in 20 years, and make sure that everything that they're doing today is going to help them in the long term. They are going to work hard today, knowing that the payoff will come much, much later. As you go up socioeconomically, you find that people's time perspective stretches out further and further. So develop the long view. Now when we say developing the long view, we mean that people with the long view are willing to sacrifice in the short term for benefits in the long term. They're willing to study and prepare and plan and work the round of practice. The law of accumulation, which says that every great achievement is an accumulation of hundreds and thousands of efforts that a person puts in that nobody ever sees. But a person is willing to do it, realizing that the payoff will be tremendous. Taking a time management course or program and learning these things is an investment of time with a payoff that can last for a long time. Now the third key, which comes out of the long view, is the ability to delay gratification. Economists agree that the number one reason why people or even economies fail is because of the inability to delay gratification. They want to spend all of their time, all of their money now. They want to have fun and do what is fun and easy rather than what is hard and necessary. Most people give up before they even make the first try, and the reason they give up is because of all the obstacles, difficulties, problems, and roadblocks that immediately appear as soon as you decide to do something that you've never done before. The fact is that successful people fail far more often than unsuccessful people. Successful people try more things, fall down, pick themselves up, and try again, over and over again before they win through. You should expect to fail and fall short many times before you achieve your goals. You should look upon failure and temporary defeat as a part of the price that you pay on your road to the success that you will inevitably achieve. Identify all the obstacles that stand between you and your goal. Write down every single thing that you can think of that might be blocking you or slowing you down from moving ahead. In the area of problems and difficulty, successful people think about solutions most of the time. Unsuccessful people think about problems and difficulties most of the time. Problem-oriented people talk continuously about their problems, about who or what caused them, how unhappy or angry they are, and how unfortunate it is that they have occurred. Solution-oriented people, on the other hand, simply ask the question, how, and then get to work to remove the problems. Personal leadership is the ability to solve problems. Effectiveness is the ability to solve problems. While men and women who accomplish anything of importance are people who have developed the ability to solve the problems that stand between them and their goals. The more you focus on solutions, the more and better solutions will come to you. The better you get at solving problems, the faster you will be at solving each subsequent problem. Eventually, you will be solving problems that can have significant financial consequences for you and others. This is the way the world works. The fact is that you have the ability to solve any problem or overcome any obstacle on the path to your goal, if you desire the goal intensely enough. In accomplishing any major goal, there's always a constraint or bottleneck that you must get through as well. Your job is to identify it accurately, and then to focus all of your energies on alleviating that key constraint. Your ability to remove this bottleneck or deal with this limiting factor can help you move ahead faster than perhaps any other step you can take. The 80-20 rule applies to the constraint between you and your goals. In this case, 
This rule says that 80% of your constraints will be within yourself. Only 20% of your constraints will be outside of yourself, contained in other people and situations. The primary obstacles between you and your goals are usually mental. They are psychological and emotional in character, rather than within the situation around you. And it is with these mental obstacles that you must begin if you want to achieve everything that is possible for you. The two major obstacles to success and achievement are fear and doubt. It is first of all the fear of failure, poverty, loss, embarrassment, or rejection that holds the average person back from trying in the first place. The second mental obstacle, closely aligned to fear, is that of self-doubt. We doubt our own abilities. We compare ourselves unfavorably to others and think that others are somehow better, smarter, and more competent than we are. We think, I'm not good enough. We feel inadequate and inferior to the challenges of achieving the great goals that we so much want to accomplish. The primary antidotes to doubt and fear are courage and confidence. The higher your level of courage and confidence, the lower will be your levels of fear and doubt, and the less effect these negative emotions will have on your performance and behavior. The way that you develop courage and confidence is with knowledge and skill. The more you learn the things you need to know to achieve your goals, the less fear you will feel on the one hand, and the more courage and confidence you will feel on the other. Dr. Martin Seligman at the University of Pennsylvania spent more than 25 years studying the phenomenon of what he called learned helplessness. The most common manifestation of learned helplessness is contained in the words, I can't. Whenever the victim of learned helplessness is offered an opportunity, possibility, or new goal, he immediately responds by saying, I can't. Whatever it is, he always has a self-limiting reason that immediately slams on the brakes of his potential. It short-circuits any attempt or desire to set a new goal or to change things in any way. Learned helplessness is usually caused by destructive criticism in childhood, negative experiences growing up, and failure experiences as an adult. The way you get over this natural tendency to sell yourself short is by setting small goals, making plans, and working on them each day. As you become more confident in yourself and your abilities, you can set even larger goals. Eventually, with a record of successes behind you, it won't be long before you become unstoppable. The second mental obstacle that you need to overcome is the comfort zone. Many people become complacent with their current situations. They become so comfortable at a particular job, relationship, salary, or level of responsibility, that they become reluctant to make any changes at all, even for the better. Don't let this happen to you. The way that you get out of your comfort zone and break loose from learned helplessness is by setting big, challenging goals. You then break these goals down into specific tasks, set deadlines, and work on them every day. Once you've made a list of all the obstacles that are standing in the way of your achieving your major goals, organize the obstacles by priority. What is the largest single obstacle? If you could wave a magic wand and remove one major obstacle from your path, which one obstacle, if removed, would help you the most in moving ahead more rapidly? When you ask the question with regard to your goal, why am I not there already? What answer comes to mind? What is holding you back? It is at this point that you have to drill down to determine the correct obstacle. Before you begin taking steps to remove it, you do this by asking the question, what else could be the problem? After each definition of the problem, by identifying the constraints or reasons that you are not achieving your personal income goals, each definition leads to a different set of solutions. They require that you think in different ways. In your personal life, it's the same. The accuracy with which you identify the obstacles or bottlenecks that are holding you back will determine the appropriateness of the various steps that you can take to remove or alleviate those obstacles. Start off by stating the problem in this way. I am not earning enough money. So, what else is the problem? Maybe the answer is, I am not contributing enough value to be worth more money. What else could be the problem? Maybe it's, I am not good enough at what I do to be capable of getting results that are worth more than I'm earning today. What else could be the problem? You could say, I don't use my time efficiently enough during the workday. What else could be the problem? You could say, I spend my evenings watching television, my weekends socializing, and I seldom read or learn anything that would help me to be better at my job. Now you have found the real problem. Now you have a clear idea of what you have to do differently if you're going to solve your original problem which was to earn more money. Once you've determined the major obstacle that is holding you back, 
Rewrite that obstacle as a positive goal. You then make a list of all the things that you could do to upgrade your knowledge and skills, improve your time management, increase your efficiency and effectiveness, and make more sales for your company. You set deadlines and measures next to each step in your strategy to achieve excellence in your field. You then select one key task and take action on it immediately. From then on, you hold your own feet to the fire. You discipline and drive yourself to do the things that you need to do to become the kind of person you need to become in order to achieve the goals that you've set for yourself. By following through on your resolution, you virtually guarantee your ultimate success and the achievement of almost any goal you can set for yourself. If you have any questions or concerns about the accuracy of your problem definition, discuss it with someone you know and trust. Put your ego aside, invite honest feedback and criticism, and be open to the possibility that you have fundamental flaws and weaknesses that are standing in the way of your realizing your full potential. Be brutally honest with yourself. Once your problem or obstacle is clear to you, Ideas, opportunities, and answers will come to you from various sources. You'll begin to attract into your life all kinds of resources that will help you to overcome the obstacle or difficulty, either within yourself or within the situation around you, and move you more rapidly toward your goal. For every problem or obstacle that is standing between you and what you want to accomplish, there is a solution of some kind, somewhere. Your job is to be absolutely clear about what sets the speed at which you achieve your goal and then to focus your time and attention on alleviating that constraint. By removing your major obstacle, you will often make more progress in a few months than the average person might make in several years. Now, here are three things you can do immediately to put these ideas into action. 1. Identify a major goal of yours and then ask, Why aren't I there already? What is holding me back? List everything you can think of. 2. Identify the constraint or limiting factor in yourself or the situation that sets the speed at which you achieve your goal. 3. Develop several definitions of your major problem or obstacle. Keep asking, what else is the problem? And be prepared to follow where the answer leads. There's an important point to remember. No one is better than you, and no one is smarter than you. I repeat, no one is better than you, and no one is smarter than you. One of the reasons you may not achieve financial success is that you believe others are doing better than you. This is not true. In fact, most millionaires were once ordinary people with ordinary education, doing ordinary jobs, living in average neighborhoods, in average homes, and driving average cars. But they discovered what financially successful people did, and they did the same until they achieved similar results. It's not a mystery, and it's not luck. When you think and act like millionaires, you will also achieve similar results. Simply put, this is the result of the law of cause and effect. Here are 21 principles of self-made millionaires. Each principle is essential to help you become a millionaire. Just failing to apply any one of these principles can sabotage, even destroy, your chances of achieving prosperity. Remember that the principle of goal setting, dreaming big dreams, is the first secret to becoming a millionaire. Simply put, dream big dreams. Allow yourself to dream. Imagine a life you love. Think about the amount of money you want to earn and have in your bank account. All great people started with dreams of things better and different from what they have now. You probably know the lyrics, Hey, you got to have dreams if you want to turn dreams into reality. This is true for you and anyone. Create for yourself a vision of a long-term future. The clearer your vision of health, happiness and finances, the faster you will achieve them. When creating a clear mental image of what you are heading for in life, you will become more positive, energetic, and determined to turn it into reality. Here's a big question you need to consistently answer. Dare to dream. What would you dare to dream if you knew you couldn't fail? If you ensured success in any life goal, big or small, short term or long term, what would it be? What big goals would you dream less if you knew you couldn't fail? Practice writing down a list of everything you would do or try to achieve if you were sure to succeed. Then decide on a specific action and implement it immediately. The principle stresses clear instructions. Let your dreams manifest into clear written goals. Perhaps the greatest discovery in human history is that the philosophy you spend most of your time thinking about will become what you think about most. There are two factors in anything that happens to you in life. What you think and how you think about it. 
Successful people spend all their time thinking about their goals. As a result, they constantly move towards their goals, and those goals also constantly move towards them. Anything you spend most of your time thinking about will grow in your life. If you're thinking, talking, and imagining your goals, you're more likely to accomplish them faster than others. Think and talk about your worries, issues, and problems. Here is a seven-step method for setting and achieving goals that you can use to become a millionaire. 1. Identify precisely what you desire in each area of life, especially in the financial aspect. Most people do not do this. 2. Write down your goals clearly and specifically. After putting your goals on paper, you will notice a surprise between thinking and writing. 3. Set deadlines for each goal. Have a backup deadline if it's a major goal. 4. Build your goals gradually. List the daily actions needed to achieve them. 5. Turn the list into an action plan. Determine what to do first, what to do next, what's more important, what's less important. 6. Start implementing the plan immediately. 7. Perhaps the most crucial step. Every day, do everything to get you closer to your most important goal. Pay attention to daily actions to help you achieve significant success in any area you want to complete. Practice thinking on paper. Sit down and write down your goals and plan to achieve them. This exercise can help you become a millionaire. The third principle is to consider yourself a boss right now. Take 100% responsibility for what you have and will have. Do not give reasons or blame others for your troubles or shortcomings. Stop complaining about things you are dissatisfied with in life. Instead of criticizing others for anything, take responsibility for yourself. If there's something in life you don't like, you must take responsibility to change it. You are responsible for yourself. When you see yourself as a boss, you will develop an entrepreneurial spirit. The spirit of independent, autonomous, and self-starting individuals. Expect something to happen. Make it happen. Take full responsibility for your health, finances, career, relationships, lifestyle, home, car, and everything that exists in your life. This is the mindset of an independent millionaire. Practice identifying the legitimate reasons why you cannot fully commit to your financial goals. Do you blame someone or something that hinders you in life? No matter what it is, take full responsibility for your life and act now. The fourth principle is to do what you love. Doing what you truly love is one of the biggest secrets to achieving financial success. One of the top responsibilities in life is to find what you truly love. The field where you are naturally talented. Then focus your entire mind to do it best. When doing a job you truly love, you will feel full of energy, excitement, and ideas to do it better. The question arises here. If you earn a tax-free million dollars, what will you continue to do tomorrow that you are currently doing? This is a significant question. Simply put, what would you do if you had all the time and money you needed and the freedom to choose your profession? Millionaires, if they had a million dollars, would continue doing what they do, but they would do it differently better, or at a higher level. However, they love their work to the extent that they would never consider giving it up. In practice, identify the type of work you love the most. What activity has contributed the most to your success in life so far? If you could do any job and succeed in it, what job would you choose? Set it as a plan and start moving in that direction from today. The fifth principle is a commitment to excellence. Doing your best is the best way to do what you can do. Set a goal for yourself to be in the top 10% in your field, whatever it may be. This decision will help you succeed and achieve great success in your work. It can be a turning point in your life. Almost all successful people excel in the field they choose. Believe that no one can do better than you and no one is smarter than you. All those in the top 10% today started from those in the top 10%. Finally, everyone doing well now has done poorly before. All those at the top of their field have had a time doing other fields, and if many others can do well, you can do well too. This is a great principle for success. Your life only gets better when you do better, and since there is no limit to how much better you can become, there is no limit to how much better you can make your life. This is one of the most important questions you have to ask and answer from now until the end of your career. Which skill, if I develop and use it perfectly, will have the most positive impact on my life? Practice identifying the areas you are primarily responsible for in your current job. 
What parts of your job do you have to excel in to help you become a leader in your field? Where are your strengths and weaknesses? Plan for you to develop skills that can help you achieve the most success. The principle is to work longer, work harder. All self-made entrepreneurs work a lot, a lot, and a lot. They often start work early, work harder, and stay in the office later. They are the most famous among those who work the hardest in their field, and everyone knows that. Practice the 40 plus formula. In this formula, you work 40 hours a week to survive. Anything you do over 40 hours is to achieve success. If you only work an average of 40 hours, about 35 hours, then all you do is to survive. You will never exceed. You will never achieve great financial success. You will never be highly valued and respected by colleagues. You see, just be ordinary workers. The 40-hour work week is your main work, but every hour beyond 40 hours is an investment in your future. In fact, you can accurately assess your position in the next five years by looking at the number of hours you work beyond the 40-hour work week each week. There is no substitute for the need to work harder. In practice, plan today to increase your working hours. Every day, arrive at the office one hour earlier and start working. During lunch breaks, even when others have already left, stay in the office one hour later. This strategy will double your productivity while only requiring an additional two hours of work each day. The seventh principle is lifelong learning. Almost unlimited learning and improvement are within your ability. In the field you have chosen, you have more mental faculties, intellectual abilities, than you have ever used. If you strive to develop yourself in the remaining part of your life, you are smarter than you imagine. There is no harm you cannot overcome, no problem you cannot solve, and no goal you cannot achieve by applying the intellectual power to every situation. Leadership is for those who love to learn, and continuous learning is the key to the 21st century. Lifelong learning is a minimum requirement for success in any field. Decide today that you will become a good student in your field, and you will continue to learn and improve throughout your life. There are three important principles for you to learn lifelong. First, you must spend at least 30 minutes to 60 minutes each day learning about your field. Reading is a way to train your mind, like exercising your body. Reading one hour every day, if you read one book a week, then in a year, you will have read 50 books, and in 15 years, you will have read 500 books. Since the average adult can't finish a book in 15 years, so when you start reading one hour every day, one book a week, this will give you a significant advantage. You will become one of the smartest, outstanding and highly paid people by simply reading one hour every day. Second, listen to radio programs while driving. On average, a person sits in a car for about 500 to 1,000 hours a year, equivalent to 12 to 24 hours a week, equivalent to three to six months of work, and equivalent to one to two semesters at a university. Third, Participate in courses and seminars that you think can help you improve your skills in your field. This is a combination of books, in-depth research, and seminars that will help you save hundreds of hours and thousands of dollars, along with many years of hard work, to achieve the level of financial success you desire. Practice choosing a topic that can help you work more productively, more effectively in your field. Set a goal to become an expert in that topic. Turn it into a project. Make yourself read about that topic every day. Listen to radio programs about that topic, attend seminars, and embark on the project as if your future depended on it. The eighth principle is to pay yourself first. Starting today, determine to save and invest at least 10% of your income throughout your working life. Deposit 10% of your salary each time you receive it into a special account to accumulate wealth. If throughout your life you save $100 a month and put at least 10% to 15% into a mutual fund, you could have an account of over $1 million when you retire. This means that anyone, even those with a minimum wage, who starts saving early and saves long enough, can become a millionaire by the time they retire. The main reason retirees find themselves in poverty is that they spent recklessly before retiring, buying whatever they liked without thinking. They become victims of what is called Parkinson's Law, which states that expenses rise to meet income. This means that no matter how much you earn, you will spend all of it, and even more. You never save and escape from debt. Don't let yourself fall victim to Parkinson's law. If you don't know how to save 10% of your income today, start saving 1% of your income in a special account. Understand and discipline yourself to do this at the beginning of each month, even if you have to pay off debts. Live comfortably with 99% of your income. 
When it feels more comfortable than 99% of your income, gradually increase the amount you save to 2%, 3%, then 4%, and continue to increase. Over a year, you will set aside 10%, and maybe 15% or 20% of your income, and live comfortably with your balanced income and expenses. At that point, your savings and investment accounts will also start to grow. You will need to be more careful with your spending and pay off your debts. Starting within one or two years, you will gain control over your entire financial life and embark on the path to becoming a millionaire. Anyone who tries this process sees results, so apply it to yourself. The ninth principle is to learn the details of your job. The market will reward great achievements handsomely, reward average performance moderately, and punish desperate failure severely. Set a goal to become an expert in your chosen field by learning every detail to improve your work. Read every magazine about your field, read and study the latest books, participate in courses and seminars by experts in your field, join professional or trade associations, attend every meeting, and connect with other top professionals in your field. If you are a salesperson, become a lifelong student. Study the average sales process well, by 20%. Top salespeople will earn 16 times more than the bottom 80%. The top 10% of salespeople earn even more. If you are a manager, determine to become a well-known professional manager. If you are starting to build your own company, learn business strategies, tactics, and try to come up with new ideas every day. Aim to be the best in your business or profession. One detail, one perspective, one small idea can be a turning point in your career, so always seek it. Principle 10 is to serve others passionately. The reward you receive in life is always proportional to your service to others. Millionaires are always obsessed with serving their customers. They think about their customers all the time, everywhere. They constantly find new and better ways to serve their customers. Ask yourself these questions. What do customers really want? What do customers value? What can I do for customers better than others? Why did my customers buy from someone else today? And what do I have to do for them to buy from me? Your success in life will be proportional to what you do after you do what is expected of you. Always look for opportunities to do more than you are paid for. Always find ways to go the extra mile to provide customers with more than what is required, and be rewarded for it. Remember that there will never be a traffic jam on that extra mile. Principle 11 is to be absolutely honest with yourself and others. Perhaps the most valued and highly regarded quality you can develop is integrity. Be absolutely honest in everything you do, in every task and action. Never compromise on integrity. Remember that your word is your bond, and integrity is paramount in business. The first key to developing integrity is to be honest with yourself in all aspects. The highest honesty is with the inner person within you. Being honest with yourself means doing things well once you commit to them. Authenticity is expressed internally through personal honesty and externally through the quality of your work. The second key to developing integrity is to be honest with others. Live truthfully with everyone. Never say or do something that you do not believe is right, good, or genuine. Live by the highest standard you know. Principle 12 is to set clear priorities and focus all your mind on them. When you develop the habit of prioritizing outstanding priorities and focus your entire mind on them, you will be able to accomplish anything you want in life. This core strategy is the main factor that brings high income, wealth, and financial independence to thousands, even millions, of people. The ability to set clear priorities and engage in achieving them is a crucial test and measure of your will, discipline, and character. This is the most difficult but essential habit to develop if you want great success. Here's a method. Make a list of everything you need to do. Before you start any goal, establish goals on that list by always asking yourself four questions. The first question, what is my highest value activity? Among the things you do, which one is of superior value to your work and your business? The second question, why am I paid? Exactly what are you hired to do? Focus on results, not activities. The third question, what can I and only I do? If done well, it will make a real difference. The fourth question, right now, what is the most valuable thing I can spend my time on? Finally, focus on one task, the most important task, and persist in doing it until it is 100% complete. Be patient. And don't let distractions take you away. Wake up to the task until it's done. 
Principle 13 is to build a reputation for speed and reliability. Time is the currency of the 21st century. Everyone today, living in an unusual rush, your job is to build a reputation for speed. Develop a sense of urgency and an action orientation. Act quickly to seize opportunities. Act swiftly when people want something or need something. Act promptly when you see something that needs to be done. Practice choosing an important task that you cannot postpone to start and be determined to do it immediately. Remind yourself of the mantra, do it now, do it now, do it now. Principle 14. Prepare to climb from one peak to another like a mountain climber. After climbing one peak, that person has to go down to the valley before climbing another mountain. Your life and career will also be such a series of ups and downs. Have you ever heard the saying, life is a process of taking two steps forward, one step back? Develop a long-term vision or a broader view for everything you do. Plan two, three, four, or five years for the future. And do not allow yourself to fall into an emotionally unstable state with the short-term fluctuations of life. Recognize that everything in your life moves in cycles and trends. Stay calm, confident, and comfortable with temporary fluctuations in your career. When you have clear goals and plans, and the overall trend in your life is forward and upward, success will come to you. Principle 15. Cultivate discipline in everything. Self-discipline is the most important quality for success in life and to become a millionaire. If you can discipline yourself to do what needs to be done at the necessary time, whether you like it or not, success is sure to come to you. The key to becoming a millionaire is to have a long-term vision combined with the ability to postpone immediate gratification. It is the ability to set long-term goals, self-impose daily routines, and only focus on doing what ensures success. Eventually, you will achieve long-term goals. Self-discipline demands that you be self-governing, self-controlling, self-responsible, and self-guiding. The difference between successful and unsuccessful people is that successful ones have the habit of building discipline. Principle 16. Unlock your inherent creativity. Here is something even better. You are a hidden genius. You are smarter than you think. You possess intelligence and creativity beyond what you have applied so far. Your creativity is stimulated by three factors. Powerful goals, urgent problems, and central questions. The more you concentrate your mind to achieve goals, solve problems, or answer challenging questions in your personal life or business, the smarter and more focused your intellect becomes on future work. Principle 17. Associate with the right people. 85% of your success and happiness in life are determined by the quality of the relationships you develop in your personal suit and professional activities. The more people you know and the more people know you in positive relationships, the more likely you are to succeed and move forward quickly. It seems that at every turning point in life, there will always be someone who either helps you or hinders you. Successful people have the habit of building and maintaining a network of reliable relationships. The result is that they accomplish more than those who just go home and watch TV every night. Principle 18. Take care of your physical health. We are living in the greatest era in human history in terms of health and longevity. Nowadays people can live better and longer than ever before. Aim to live to at least 80, 90 or even 100 years with good health, and you can absolutely achieve this. First, set a goal to live at least 80 years. Then, examine your current health habits and see if they can help you live healthily until 80. There are three key aspects needed for a healthy, happy and active life. Maintaining a proper weight, proper nutrition, and regular exercise. Principle 19. Be decisive and action-oriented. One of the qualities of millionaires is that they always think deeply and then quickly make decisions. They train themselves to admire the action plate and implement their decisions immediately. They act fast and rapidly receive feedback from their actions. If they see a mistake, they quickly correct it and try a different approach. The key to success for you is to lead yourself like successful people, be decisive, and try more things than others. Follow the law of probability. If you try different ways to succeed, the probability is that you will eventually find the right way at the right time. Principle 20. Never allow failure to be an option. The fear of failure is the greatest obstacle to human success. Note that failure itself does not prevent you from success, because failure makes you stronger, more flexible, and more determined. 
It is the fear of failure, or the psychological anticipation of failure, that can paralyze your thinking and actions. Holding on to fears prevents you from doing what you need to do to achieve great success. Dare to move forward. Millionaires are not gamblers, but they are always willing to accept the risks that have been anticipated in goal setting to achieve greater rewards than reality. Your willingness to become rich in any situation you face is the most important guide to whether you're willing to take risks. Principle 21. Overcome challenges. Cultivate perseverance. Perseverance is an essential quality for everyone. Perseverance in human nature is like springs to steel. It is an indispensable quality that always accompanies great success. One of the greatest secrets of perseverance and success is to program in your subconscious about Perseverance to deal with the difficulties and disappointments you will encounter on the path to conquering success. Determination is to never give up, no matter what happens. When immersed in too many difficult problems, you will not have enough time to exert the necessary perseverance to solve them. But if you plan ahead for the inevitable ups and downs in life, when they come, you will be completely proactive in mentality, courage, and perseverance. Persistent and determined facing every challenge more than anything else will ensure your success. Your greatest personal asset is enduring more than others. In fact, perseverance is the measure of your belief and your ability to lead to success. Believe that you can be as good as or better than the people you've met. You are an exceptional individual. You have more intelligence and talent than you realize or use. What you already have within you is the hidden potential to accomplish everything beautiful in your life. The greatest responsibility in your life is to dream big dreams accurately what you desire. Make plans to achieve that. Practice the strategies taught in this book. Direct your actions every day towards your dreams and goals. Be persistent and never give up. When you take these actions, you will.